So before we start uh, getting into the nuts and bolts of things, I think it's important to understand um, what a Bitcoin node is, why uh, you would want to run a Bitcoin node, um, ways that you can run a Bitcoin node, and of course, I'll explain an overview of the Ministry of Nodes Bitcoin node box and its pros and cons. Now, what is a Bitcoin node? A Bitcoin node is an application that you run on your computer. It downloads and verifies all transactions since the inception of Bitcoin. It gives you the ability to broadcast your transactions and check the status of them. Now, that's pretty much a very loose textbook definition. Now, the way that I like to explain this is, say, in the uh, physical realm, if we were going onto the gold standard, um, and if you were to render some services to me, and in payment, I gave you a brown bag, um, would you automatically trust that, you know, uh, that the, the transaction is complete? Or would you go and actually verify that it is actually gold? So you would open it, you would inspect it, weigh it, those sorts of things. What you're doing here is you're verifying that it is actually gold. In the digital realm, um, a Bitcoin node is typically your uh, fake Bitcoin detector, so to speak. It, it allows you to verify that it is actually Bitcoin that you are receiving. Now, if you're using somebody else's node, um, then they are doing the verification for you and they are just numbers on a screen presented to you by that trusted third party, which may or may not um, adhere to the rules that of what you believe Bitcoin to be. So say, for example, we um, all were on uh, Trezor's node or Ledger's node, and they believe that uh, Bitcoin has 25 million coins. And we all believe that, hey, no, 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 we know that Bitcoin has only 20, uh, 21 million coins. Um, and so they're showing you a balance that is one BTC out of a possible 25 million uh, coins. And so this is why it is important for us uh, as individuals to um, run a Bitcoin node so that you are actually verifying it. Now, the reason why you would want to run a Bitcoin node, as I, as I mentioned, to verify your own balances and incoming transactions without the need of trusted third parties. The second point is to um, actually broadcast your transactions without censorship. So what if one day Ledger comes in and says, okay, you can only transact between the hours of nine to five, Monday to Friday, and need to vet these transactions. Uh, that's not the exact ethos of Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin allows you to tr uh, transact without any censorship. And so that is, um, yeah, why you would run a Bitcoin node uh, just in the event that um, Trezor or Ledger or one of these other companies or uh, third parties that are running a Bitcoin node on your behalf, they don't uh, put these arbitrary rules in place. Now, the third reason is from a privacy perspective, when you go out and query um, against somebody else's Bitcoin node, you're, you're creating a log there and uh, it's not ideal for your privacy. So if you were to use your own Bitcoin node, then from that perspective, you are transacting a little bit more privately. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of the other reasons that you would run a Bitcoin node. And one of the final reasons is it's to add to the decentralization of the network. Um, and so what that means is because you are verifying your own Bitcoin uh, transactions uh, and not relying on a trusted third party, we are decentralizing that process. You know, if you want to put a, um, a phrase to it, you are keeping the bastards honest. The other thing that's worth mentioning at this point is that you are not actually earning or mining Bitcoin by running a node. Uh, that's a completely separate process. Um, and so this is more of a cost to you um, and more of a, a, a way for you to um, set up your own banking infrastructure on the Bitcoin network uh, as you run that Bitcoin node. And so the costs will be obviously the hardware that you need, the electricity to keep it up and uh, your internet um, service provider bill. So those are the three main costs associated with this when you're running a Bitcoin node. And the good news is, is that you don't have to have a massive server or a massive warehouse or massive pieces of infrastructure to be able to run a Bitcoin node. Um, you can do that uh, very, very cheaply, um, which I will explain later in the series.
Now, there are some ways to run a Bitcoin node, and um, I think a lot of them are presented in this website here. Um, and so you can go through uh, basically, you know, um, all of the, uh, I guess, uh, options here for you. Um, and you can go across and sort of, you know, uh, see the various options that are in place um, for running a Bitcoin node. I want to obviously focus on the Ministry of Nodes Bitcoin node box um, and building that out on your own. So let's uh, go into that. So here is the structure of the Bitcoin node box. Um, generally speaking, you will get um, a, uh, some hardware uh, that, or you will need some hardware. Um, I like the Dell Optiplex, which you see there. Um, this is in the, uh, what's known as the ultra small form factor. Um, I generally get an i5 processor, eight gigs of RAM, um, two terabyte SSD, um, and it weighs in at about one and a half kilos. Um, and those are the dimensions there as well that you can see on screen. After that, we install um, an operating system. I like to use Ubuntu 24.04, um, which is the long-term support edition, and it's the server edition, so there's no uh, you know, fancy um, graphical interface. There's no big overheads that, need to, that, that, that come with um, installing peripheral packages. Um, you'll then install Bitcoin Core, um, and that database is about you know, 700 gigabytes as of, as of today. And um, you'll also need to run an Electrum server, which I will show you throughout the series. And it's about, you know, 50 gigabytes as well. And of course, uh, you get a Blockchain Explorer um, mempool.space. And from there, you can use your own existing laptop to uh, call out to this node once you've built it. And you can use Sparrow Wallet to hook up to your Electrum server, import your favorite hardware wallets like a Trezor, Ledger, Cold Card, whatever keys that you hold um, can all be imported into your existing computer via Sparrow Wallet, and you can go from there. So that's a little bit about the, a basic structure of the node box. Now, by way of pros and cons, from a pros perspective, it's minimal trusted um, parties. It's a DIY approach. Um, what we're doing here is we're building everything out ourselves we're installing everything we're making sure that you know there's nothing nefarious on there um, and so it is a very build build it yourself and you know do it yourself style approach um, and that keeps things very lightweight um, both from a physical perspective because the hardware is quite you know uh, it, it's very light but also from a bloat perspective you're not installing random things that you don't need um, onto your computer taking up additional resources ram um, system resources so on and so forth the other thing is that there's no personal or identifiable information that's stored on um, the node. So if someone was to grab it, yeah, they'll see that there's a Bitcoin node on there, but they won't have access to um, your your private keys, your public keys or anything like that. It will be completely um, unidentifiable. There's nothing there um, for you to or for somebody else to um to look into other than whatever's you know whatever's already public anyway which is um bitcoin's public blockchain um it's very silent it's a small form factor you get a solid uptime uh, minimal downtime and uh you get to learn new computing skills um it, it, it is a challenge obviously because it is a diy approach but i see that as a as a pro to learning new skills um and being able to then you know going off and, and exploring um, some of the software that's available, uh, some free and open source software that's available um, out there that you can then use and run as well. So some of the cons, um, with this particular setup, there's no inbuilt um, battery or um, uninterrupted power supply. So power outages can present a problem. The other option that I've seen um, is, is to use laptops, which have an inbuilt battery. So if the power does go out, then the battery will kick in um, for however long uh, 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 until the power comes back. So that's an option. Um, and the other con is that, you know, it takes time to learn and understand and, and really, uh, you know, get stuck into this. Um, it's not for everybody, but I think it's worthwhile at least watching and learning and seeing how, um, you know, I, I, build, I, I build this out. Um, there's manual updates and upgrades, um, 
but I see that as a pro as well because you get to choose um, what, what software you want. But again, it is manual intervention. It will take time. Um, and as a result, there's no trusted third parties to rely upon. So that's a con as well. It's like you can't go out there and say, okay, well, can someone help me? It's kind of you do it on your own and, and you kind of figure it out. Um, sure, you'll be able to, you know, get questions on the internet and, and sort of go browse through forums and that sort of stuff. But again, that'll take time to learn and understand and, and, and get into. The other con is that you must have physical access um, to your router to plug into. Um, I know some scenarios whereby you only get Wi-Fi um, in a particular area or, or whatever else, um, but if you have physical access to the router to plug um, the network cable into, then then yeah, then it's fine. But if you don't, then it becomes a little bit more challenging. So um, that's another con there. Overall, again, I encourage you to run a Bitcoin node. Um, however best you see fit, go out and explore um, that website and see what's best for you. And if you'd like to go down the path of building out your own Ministry of Nodes Bitcoin node box, uh, you're more than welcome to follow along in the series as I go through the nitty gritty of it all. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing, head on over to ministryofnodes.com.au and click on the support button. If you'd like to have one-on-one -on -one consulting, click on the consulting button and book a session on the calendar widget. And if you'd like to purchase a Bitcoin node, head on over to the shop and purchase one from shop.ministryofnodes.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.